Hello and welcome to the National Registry's video on multiple response item development. My name is Matt Ozanich and I'm one of the program managers at the National Registry responsible for overseeing item development from the time that it's written by a subject matter expert to the time that it's fully developed and ready to count towards a candidate's exam. Before I get into multiple response item development, I want to first introduce myself as far as my EMS background and my testing background. I've had a 16-year career in EMS that includes fire-based EMS, tactical EMS, a critical care setting, as well as I've been an educator and an administrator in multiple settings. As far as testing is concerned, I've been through classes and I've reviewed thousands of test items at the National Registry, which makes me a specialist in how to develop a proper test item. Let me begin by first describing the National Registry examination. Our examination is what's called a computerized adaptive test. What that means is each candidate is going to have a unique experience based on their knowledge, skills, and abilities. It's important when developing a quality computerized adaptive test that we have items of varying difficulty. So we need items that are easy, items that are middle of the road, and items that are difficult in order to appropriately adapt to each candidate. As you are aware, the National Registry is introducing multiple response items to our computerized adaptive test. A multiple response item is a specialized type of multiple choice item in which a candidate would be expected to choose more than one correct answer option. Remember that in your traditional multiple choice item, the candidate is expected to choose the one correct answer option. The benefit to adding multiple response item types is that we can offer higher fidelity. What that means is that we can more appropriately simulate the field. For example, as a paramedic, as I'm coming up to a cardiac arrest, I'm often thinking three things now and two steps in advance. Multiple response items lend themselves to be able to test that thought process more efficiently than multiple choice, where we might be doing one thing at a time, which just isn't practical as an EMS provider. It also allows us to test higher levels of thinking than a traditional step-by-step -step multiple choice item. Some helpful information when it comes to good test item construction is knowing the terminology and the parts of the item. For example, the key is the correct option. The distractor is the incorrect option. The stem is the general concept or the question being asked. When it comes to multiple response items in particular, the National Registry is going to be using what's called a 2 of 5 or 3 of 6 format, which means that the candidate would either be presented with five options and be expected to choose two keys out of those five options, or they'll be presented with six options and be expected to choose three keys out of those six options. The 2 of 5 or 3 of 6 format is most common in testing. However, just as an added FYI, traditionally what you want is a minimum of your keys plus two additional options. So if you're writing your own exams, it would be appropriate to have two keys and four total options, so two keys and two distractors. Now that we understand the parts of a properly written test item, let's talk about how to put them together. You want to make sure that your stem and your options use concise, clear, and professional language. You want to treat it as if this is a multi-agency scene that you're responding to. You want to make sure that everybody at the scene is using plain language or common medical terminology and everybody understands what's being asked. You also want to avoid ambiguity. You don't want to present too much information to the candidate because you want to test their content knowledge, not their reading comprehension. Here at the National Registry, we also reference our exam items, which means that we have proof that the key is correct and the distractors are incorrect. Now that we know the basics of good test item construction, and we know some of the details in developing a multiple response item, let's get into some practice items. Now with these practice items, I want you to review them with the following points. Is the STEM's intent clear? How many keys should the candidate be choosing? Is the STEM concise or does it contain too much information? And is the item correct? In this first example item, we are asked, which of the following arteries perfuse a portion of the heart? Select the two answer options that are correct. We have keys marked as circumflex artery and anterior descending artery. We have distractors marked as carotid, perineal, and middle cerebral arteries. We know that the candidate is clearly being asked to choose two of the five answer options as keys. This is also a good test item because the stem is concise, the options are concise, and we know that the options are referenced. In this second example item, we are asked, a 23-year-old patient is having an asthma attack. 
The patient's vital signs are blood pressure 108 over 78, pulse 103, respirations 24, pulse oximetry 92% on room air. What signs or symptoms should the paramedic expect to find in this patient? Select the three answer options that are correct. We have keys marked as respiratory distress, pallor, and wheezing. We have distractors marked as coughing, tracheal deviation, and facial droop. So we have to ask ourselves, is the stem's intent clear? And is it concise? Well, in this case, it's not. The stem presents too much information. What we're asking the candidate is, what are the signs and symptoms of asthma? But we've thrown a lot of different information in here and we're actually more testing the candidate's reading comprehension and endurance than we are the candidate's knowledge. So, we could simply change this to say, what are the signs and symptoms of asthma? It is clear to us how many keys the candidate should be choosing. They should be choosing three of the six answer options presented to them. The last thing we're gonna ask ourselves is, is the item correct? Well, you may have noticed that Coughing is a potential additional key, so this item is actually not correct. So we would have to go through and change that distractor. Still have questions about multiple response item development? We want to hear from you. Join us in our upcoming live Q&A on Twitter, at NREMT. You can find the details and the link in the description.